Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below for Mind Up or any other game. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be getting our minds up about this classic feel and classic looking card game where you're trying to score the most points. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Mind Up is a classic looking card game that has five different colors and the numbers range from one to 60. The game is played over three rounds. At the end of each round, you're gonna score. These scoring cards are random each round, so they change. And you'll notice that there's only one uh, color in each column. When you get the same color in the same column, you stack them. And this tells you how many points per card in this column. As you collect new colors, you're gonna be placing them left to right. So if I got, the first card I collected was an orange. The second one was a green. Then I did, you know, two blues. Then I did this, then I did this. So I just showed us here, that that's how you do it. If I had picked another orange one, it would go here. So we have three points per card. So this one's worth three, but there's a little plus one here. So that's four points. This one's just one. These two are five each, 10 points with a minus one. So that's nine there. This is uh, two points and this is four for each of these. And then that plus and minus cancel out. So that's how you're scoring over the course of the three rounds. Now each successive round, you'll actually have an additional card. So the first round, you're gonna score seven cards. The next round, eight. And then the last third round, there'll be nine cards. But generally speaking, you're obviously trying to get the cards that will score you the most points in that spot knowing that this is going to change from round to round. Now, the center of the table is gonna be seated with as many cards as there are players, and here we're playing with four players, so there's four cards. Now, each player has seven cards in their hand at the beginning. They're gonna select one of these to place face down in front of them. Once everyone is selected, you flip it face up, and then all those cards that were just played by all those players also go in ascending order. So, whoever played the lowest one of the ones that were just played takes the lowest card. Next one, next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. So if you're going for this card, you're probably gonna to wanna to try to play something high or at least the highest card of the four players. Do so you want this one, the lowest one of the four players and everything in between. So let's say we were the one that played 58, we would be collecting this one. And again, because we have no cards, we'll place it here. On the next card, if we get a pink one, it goes here. If it's a new color, it goes here. Again, you're always stacking. So right now, I don't really want any more pinks because they're only be worth one point. Uh, but I'm really gonna want the second color and I'm gonna wanna try to keep collecting that second color because this one's worth five points because if I get a third color, they're only gonna be worth two, but then if I get a fourth color, they're gonna be worth four and so on and so forth, but there's also these little bonuses you wanna keep track of. Now, the cool thing is, is once all these cards are taken from the players, it's called Mind Up because these slide up and now the cards that everyone played are the ones that people are trying to play to, to win. So there's actually a lot of strategy as to which cards you play to try to get the cards, but also what are you leaving out there for the other people? Are you, do you have cards that you want? Do you have cards that other players want? When do you play those? Do you hold off? Do you play them now? There's a lot of uh, strategy, even though the game's pretty simple. Now again, at the beginning of the uh, round, you have seven cards in the first round. And let's say I have these six ones here. Now the last card that's in your hand, you get to place into your tableau. And that's important because you have some strategy as to what card you're purposely holding back to try to score yourself the most. I've already showed you how to score. Once this is done, another interesting thing is all the cards in your tableau become your hand for the next round. So these are the ones that even though you took them, they are now the ones you're gonna be using to sort of bid on the other cards. You'll also draw an extra card, meaning round two, you'll get one, extra, you'll have eight cards and in round three, you have nine cards. These also will get shuffled as well. So one player will shuffle those cards, put them in order, and everyone else puts them in that same order. That's it, you play three rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now there's these advanced objectives that you can play with. They're, they're you know, optional. I highly recommend you play with them. Uh, you can play with them where you just uncover one of these per round and it's the goal that everyone's fighting for. Or you can play with up to five of them for more complexity, but you want the number, the letters to be different if you're doing more than one. Like this one says, uh, if you have orange cards in your one and two slots, you get minus two. If you have the most blues, you get plus two. If you have the least amount of pinks, you get minus two or so on and so forth. So these just give you some more reasons to do certain things. All right, let me tell you what I first liked about the game. It feels and looks like a classic game. I mean, it looks like one of those games that came out sort of maybe in the 80s, maybe like phase 10-ish, something like that. I could see this game being in mass market stores and I hope it will be because spoiler, I really like the game. Uh, but it has that sort of classic look. And it kind of feels like a classic game. There's simple turns, but there is good depth. There's a lot of things to think about. You're looking at your opponent's tableau, and that's gonna help devise your strategy. You're looking at what they need, what colors do they need, what colors do they definitely not want right now. Uh, and based upon that, everything that they're trying to do, you, you can look at their tableaus and go, they're probably gonna want this. But 
how do they do it? Do they have the right cards to do it? What cards are they going to, what cards do they want to play? What cards do they want to hold back? What cards do they want to have the last card to add to their tableau? So it's very simple. Play a card face down, flip it up, put it there, get a card. That's it, mechanically. It's so simple. But there's a lot of, I mean, this is not a heavy game. It's a light game. It's not a brain burnery game. But for as light as it is and how casual you can play this game, there's actually quite a bit of thinking that you can do going on with this game. Uh, it feels like basically the second half of the, a popular game called For Sale, where you're, you're basically putting a card down there, trying to guess what people are going for, but also trying to guess what might they be playing. Uh, and then you're trying to like, oh, I want the first one. Is a six gonna get it or do I have to throw my two here? I don't know, right? You know, things like that. You can look around and see what other cards are out, things like that. Um, I love that the played cards become the new cards to gain. This is huge in the strategy of this game because you might be like, oh, I need this card over here that's you know, I need the highest card, right? Um, can I get it with the 47 or can I get it with the, you know, the 58? Do I need to play the 58? Well, if I play the 58, am I also going to want that card? Well, what color is it, right? So sometimes you're holding back cards or playing cards specifically because you do or don't want that card out on the next round because you know the card you play is going to be the next one people are going after and if you want that you want that to happen when you think that you have a card that can get it right i mean if you play a 58 and you're going to want that 58 you're also going to want another higher one in your hand if you don't you might want to wait till later when there's less cards and you have a better chance of getting it see what i'm saying there's like it's easy but there's a lot of things to consider it's very clever i really like this game a lot um i like that each round when 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 you do your scoring you shuffle the cards up, one person does it, everyone has a new scoring, and it does change the way you want. If the five's first, you're gonna wanna get that first color and stay on that color the whole time. If the five's last, you might wanna just get a bunch of different colors, getting that last one and try to hammer it down if you have the right cards to do so, but it does change your strategy each round, which I like. I love that the last card in your hand goes into your tableau. Another sort of game I think did this uh, gap, or the gap from uh, Arcane Wonders, where like you're playing cards, you're thinking of things, but you're always like, I've got my little trump card that I know the one I don't play is absolutely going in my tableau. I can count on that. So it's like, hmm, do I give up this card to try to get a card I really want, or do I just put this card down here, right? Another interesting choice. I also like that after you score your tableau, those become your next round's hand. It's just easy mechanically and it just makes it interesting that the cards that you're collecting maybe that's another layer of depth of strategy of i want a wide range of cards or i want you know things like that so wow it's there's just a lot here for how simple the game is i like the advanced scoring cards those i would highly recommend playing at least with one of those per round even on your first play uh, but I, it says you can play with you know multiples of them as long as the letters are different i highly recommend that because it does make the game have even more depth than it does more things to think about uh, I like the, the, the plus or minus on some of the cards. It helps facilitate multiple options. So you might be like, you know what? I really don't want that color. But you know what? If I get it, it's a plus one. And eh, now it's at least a two, right? Um, and so, or like, hey, I really want this, but you know what? It's a minus one. And if I go with this other one, it's actually going to be the same amount. So which card do I want to put down? Which one do I have to be next? See what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of thinking that goes on, even with just, uh, you know, the numbers on the cards. I like the arc of the game where each round you get one more card. So you, you get, you know, each round's one hand, one card longer and longer. Gives the game a little bit better, uh, a better arc that you can score more and more each round, which is kind of fun. Um, on the negative side of things, sometimes it can feel random. Now, it's not random. Uh, people are thinking about what they're playing. You're looking at theirs. You're trying to devise what can you possibly play that, to get what you, what you want. But then you might play something, everyone does something completely different than you thought they would, and it feels random random it's not random but it can feel a little chaotic especially with the higher player counts um it can feel like hey there's a lot of chaos going on so it can feel too chaotic for some with the higher player counts the only other negative i could say is scoring can be it's easy to do it but it's pretty procedural and it's easy to screw things up because you're just scoring you, there's so many little things to look at a score pad really would have helped uh for each player for each round and the five different you know, levels, your one, your one score, your two, three, four, five cards. I wish they would have just had like a nice little score pad that you could easily keep score with. It would have just made things a little easier. You want to recount things and that's it. Those only two things I can think that can make this, that, you know, that makes this game better. Uh, Cause it is fantastic. And that is mind up. If you're looking for a good little family, little, you know, 20 to 30 minute filler game that's easy to play, easy to teach. You can teach anyone, but still gamers will have some fun with it too because there is a decent amount of depth here. Then that's mind up. 
Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and if you missed their 4.0 Kickstarter, you can still late pledge and take advantage of over 40 unlocked stretch goals and early fulfillment. This campaign featured a new young Sherlock table, perfect for children's gaming and movable coffee table, 10 new thematic mats by top artists like Vincent Dutre, a new designer art series Mycroft Topper with thematic art from Brent Woodside, and some of the best package deals they've had including game map bundles. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge now.